What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Matt Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, Chief. Hi, Julie. Hi, Leah. Hi, Chief. <laughs> Are you ready for a, a, a nice week of Chief Chat? I am. We got plenty of them this week. <laughs> we do. Sound, it's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, you don't sound convincing, Julie. Come on now. Julie. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta do you're better than that. Me, you're calling me out. My no. bosses watch this. No, huh? Julie, Julie loves cheap chat. Absolutely. I do. I do love cheap chat. It's great. It's fun. So, I mean, there's always been one one phrase that I've always wanted to say, uh, and, and I probably this is probably the only venue that I get a chance to say it. But, ladies and gentlemen. Start your engine. I know, because <laughs> I know they're not gonna let me say it anywhere else in the whole wide world. So, um, our, our next guest lives his life in the fast lane, and he's here to show us some love on Chief Chat. So, uh, Julie, please introduce today's guest. Chief, that was great. Like <laughs> that, that rehearsal that I did, yeah. Applaud, <laughs> I applaud you. That was awesome. <laughs> we do have our engines fired up for today's guest. He is a professional stock car driver competing full-time in NASCAR's Camping World Truck Series. He's with us today to boost morale for the military community. Thanks to our friends at Flying Circle. Please give a big chief chat welcome to Austin Wayne Self. Hey, hey, what's going on, Austin? Austin. Good, too. We we need to get you to the racetrack so you can do it. Oh, good. yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'll, I'll do it a whole yeah, lot better at the racetrack, I promise you. Yeah, we're, I'm pumped up now. It's been a while since I've heard those words. So uh, I'm about, I think I'm less than three weeks now. So, um, man, I'm, I'm excited to hear those words again. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Austin, thanks so much for joining us and for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments and let us know where you're tuning in from. Flying Circle will be giving away a prize package to one lucky viewer today. So be sure to share some love with Austin in the comments and leave your questions there too. We'll read those live throughout the broadcast. And that's also how you can enter to win this prize package. Now you can start your watch party with your uh, friends. Now is a good time to start your watch party to enjoy this interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should because we have chief chats every Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes even Wednesdays or Fridays, you never know. But following us, you'll know who's coming up next. Awesome. So Austin, man, it's been a, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. And we, we thrilled to have you join us. Uh, can you tell us where you're calling from and how you've been faring during this pandemic? So I'm calling from, uh, I'm actually calling from my race shop, uh, here where our, our race team is based out of, and it's actually in Statesville, North Carolina. So it's uh, just north of Charlotte and, and east of Asheville, uh, North Carolina. So, uh, and, and really, you know, for us up here, we're a little bit out of the city. So I think it's a little bit more flexible, um, but man, I, I don't know. I mean, that, the question, that question now between, you know, when, when everything with COVID kind of started happening and now, it's weird because I, I think a lot of people have kind of gotten used to, you know, it's, it's almost been normalized a little bit, you know, uh, the way of life is, is a little bit different, but I think, um, I think one thing is we kind of all adapt to the environment we're in. So uh, for me, I'm doing as good as I, I can do. And I think, uh, you know, me and my family and the guys here at the shop, you know, we take it one day at a time and, and um, you're only going to be as good as you're going to be that day. So, uh, as long as you wake up and with a good attitude, no matter the position you're in, um, I can comfortably say uh, I'm doing great. And, and um, this this uh, pandemic hasn't hasn't slowed slowed me down or or um, you know hasn't changed uh, hasn't changed who I am. I'm still very comfortable and and um, of course you know faith in the Lord. So um, everything's good, man. I'm I'm real happy. Oh yeah, no, no, I, yeah it. It does feel like we're normalizing, but I can tell you that I'm so ready for this thing to be over with. I'm so ready to, to do some things that I that I haven't done in a long time. But uh, yeah, we we are adapting and overcoming. You made you made some great points. Austin, understand that congratulations are in order. You recently tied the knot. Uh, what was it like celebrating such a huge milestone amid a pandemic? Yeah, it's um, yeah. I'm really happy. Of course, you know my my wife is um, um, it's. Uh, her brother, I'm, I'm a competitor with her brother. Her brother actually races as well in, in the truck series and is actually going to do Xfinity series. So I've been with her for uh, basically my whole, 
whole NASCAR career so far uh, since I got in the truck series in 2016. So, um, you know, it feels it feels about about how I expect. It feels pretty normal, but <laughs> uh, the 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 pandemic, everything. You know, we we had uh, got engaged. Um, I guess uh, it was 2019 December. Yeah. So 2019, we got engaged and we started planning a wedding. And, and when everything started happening, we just kind of, we went through it. You know, we kind of looked at the, uh, you know, the reason we we're getting married was to uh, uh, bless our love in front of people, in front of the Lord. And, and uh, you know, we were going to get married. Rather, it was just me and her, five people, 10 people. And, and fortunately, uh, you know, we got married in Asheville. Um, and the venue was, was really cool. And we were able to have... Uh, well over a hundred people. So, uh, you know, everything, it was, it was a decent sized venue, whatnot. And, uh, you know, we prayed over it and, and nobody's come back and had COVID after 120 people. So, um, you know, that just goes show you what prayer can do. And, and, um, but yeah, it's, it, that part wasn't a whole lot different. We did a little honeymoon of course, Christmas and, and new year's, uh, with some family in, in Indiana and, and, uh, we've kind of, this month has kind of been a shock back to reality. <laughs> Too many arguments, but um, yeah, it's been it's been great. We we were pretty much on a month long honeymoon, and uh, now it's this is time of year. It's always kind of hectic for me anyway, getting ready for race season. And and um, I don't know. I feel a little bit more at peace now that I got somebody to drag along with me to. to, listen to <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I and I saw you looking at her when you had to kind of validate dates. That that never goes away. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> it never ever goes away. You're gonna forget every day I think that's that means so much to your, your your partner. Like it's just it's just a thing. It's just what we what we do. The funniest thing is so so she's actually uh does PR for me and whatnot. So she we work together, she travels with me uh everywhere. So uh she's not only my wife, but uh I guess in a sense we kind of do business together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you, can you hey can you flash the camera over to her so she yeah, can let's wave? see her? Hey! Hi! Nice to see you, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm nice making to... sure that the connection and all is good. Yeah. Nothing goes wrong. She's, yes. She's no, she did good. Job. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's been great. I, it's been a lot of fun. And of, of course, I, I try to pick a date close to Christmas. That way it was always on, on my mind, you know. So, so you won't forget. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but, yeah, listen, I, I know. I know. Well, congratulations, you guys. Um, okay, we mentioned before we're giving away a prize package flying with Flying Circles. So for everybody watching, thank you for being here. Drop your name and your location in the Facebook comments for a chance to win a special prize package courtesy of Flying Circle. Uh, we'll draw that name later tonight after this show has ended. Awesome. So let's let's switch gears uh, and no all pun intended on that one. So let's <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah. not rehearsed. Man, that wasn't rehearsed either. So yeah, let's let's switch gears to uh, stock car driving. So can you kind of tell us uh, how old you were when you started like racing and uh, what kind of drew you to motorsports? Yeah. So the, it's it's definitely an interesting story. So you know, not none of my family before uh, before me, you know, had been in, involved in racing. Uh, it actually started. Uh, I, have, I have a bunch of great uncles and so my and family in Indiana. And so my dad used to go um, with my great uncles, his uncles, I call them my uncles. Uh, but so my uncles, my dad used to go and watch the uh, Indianapolis 500. And so that's where their interest in racing came along. So I, I was actually uh, three or four years old and my dad wanted to, you know, get into racing as, as a hobby for himself. And, and, um, you know, my mom was telling him that he was going to have to, to find something, you know, to uh, that we, me and him could do together, father, son, do together. And, and of course, I had played soccer and, and t-ball and stuff a little bit, you know, dabbled in it. Um, I was always big into Hot Wheel cars, really young. But uh, so actually, I got into racing because my dad wanted to go racing. So he went bought a go-kart and bought me a go-kart. And then we went to the racetrack. So I started racing uh, driving at Ford and, and then my first race was as soon as possible it was I think five years old is is uh is kind of like when they say okay you can go race so it was a little go-kart five years old and and um what started as a hobby with with me and my dad um you know it just kind of took off you know we we raced all around Texas um Oklahoma um till I was about eight years old and then um 
you know, things were going good. And, and before too long, I was kind of dragging my dad around, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, we, you know, we got to get to the next step. Right. And so I started racing some national uh, go-kart stuff all around the country, even Canada. And, um, and the, and the funniest thing about uh, my venture into stock car racing was I was, I think I was around 13 years old and um, I was wanting, I always thought I was going to go indie car racing, open wheel racing. And, um, you know, at the time, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity um, for me to, to do that, you know, go to that next level at that age. But uh, one thing you could do is, is get in the stock car. So I actually got in a, a, what they call late mall. And um, I got in that 13 years old and started racing uh, uh, late models at 14, um, which are stock cars, full blown, you know, 400, 500 horsepower cars. And, um, it was, it was really great because I, I actually got to go my fresh, freshman year of high school uh, at a local high school in Austin um, at Vandegrift. I might as well throw them in there. <laughs> yeah. uh, my mom would pick me up from school, and she'd have to drive me to the racetrack so I could go race because I didn't have a, a driver's license at that point. <laughs> yeah, so that's how my, my stock car career started. And then I dabbled in some ARCA racing um, in 2013 and 14. Um, you know, rookie of the year and second place in points in, in 2015. And, and um, you know, we decided maybe it was time to, you know, go, go for NASCAR, see what we could do in, in, uh, in uh, NASCAR. And, of course, the truck series was kind of the next step, really. And, and um, man, I've, I've loved it. I, I really love the truck series. Um, you know, they, it's just so much fun. And, of course, the trucks look better than anything else, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's cool <laughs> to drive a, a truck around the, the track at a – 185 miles per hour so um that's and that kind of leads me to here today you know i think this is she's good at the numbers i don't know if it's my fifth or sixth year in nascar but um yes yeah, so started at a young age and and uh it was just a hobby with with me my, with uh my dad because he wanted to go racing and my mom told me he had to find something that we could do together so he went up <laughs> she's like whatever you do you gotta take your son with you yeah. <laughs> i need some time to myself <laughs> So, is there was there a favorite driver that you uh, followed? You know, um, you know that's that's always a difficult one for me. Like I said, I, I grew up big IndyCar fan, so um, like Tony uh, Kanan, um, Elio Castro Nevis, you know, a lot of the IndyCar guys. But it was always crazy to me because I I, I think it's because I started racing at such a young age that. I just really loved racing and what I was doing. And so developing into being a fan, I was, I was never, you know, of course I loved watching racing, but I never uh, looked up to any big drivers because when I was young, I thought that th those are the guys, you know, they, they're in the position I want to be in. And, and so I was, I always really loved driving myself and, and uh, you know, I never, I never looked in NASCAR and, and I always looked at those guys as man, that's where I want to be. And, um, you know, I was, I was looked at as, you know, I enjoyed what I was doing. And so, um, I never, I never was a huge, you know, diehard fan of anybody or, or of racing general. I just liked racing and, and, uh, and that's what I liked doing, you know, and, and I would watch some racing here and there, but it just stemmed from me driving and, and loving, loving doing it, you know? Absolutely. I was really struck by what you said about having to have your mom come pick you up from school so you could go drive. Like that cracks me, <laughs> that cracks me up. I don't know. I thought that was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, so you are gearing up for NASCAR's Vegas weekend. Your season kicks off at the Daytona International Speedway here in a couple weeks on February 12th. What have you been doing to prepare for 2021? Um, well, they, Daytona is an interesting one. Um, because there's only so much we can prepare for. Um, I always look at Daytona as kind of like a, you almost have better odds going to Vegas and winning big in Vegas, I think. <laughs> so I had a really good year. I've, I've been involved in big crashes. So um, it's really all about the racing there. So for me preparing, you know, I did, we have a simulator, um, you know, that I get steering with force feedback and everything. So, um, I've kind of been preparing a little bit farther ahead than, than Daytona as well, but I get on there and, and I can simulate and make changes to cars. I have an engineer that comes in and, and we work together, um, talk with the crew chief. Um, for me, I do a little bit of physical activity. 
uh, we've been trying to do, you know, this has kind of been me and Jen, we've been trying to do uh, Orange Theory and, and some different stuff. So for me, the biggest thing is, is keeping my heart rate up. Uh, you know, it gets 120, 130 degrees inside the cars and you're in there for, for hours. And, mm. and so for me, it's, it's about just, you know, I, I used to do a lot of cycling and whatnot. But it's keeping my heart rate up and being comfortable and not heart rate for a long period of time, as well as uh, get, being used to, you know, really warm car and, and uh, having it down stuff. Mm-hmm. That, that's the other thing. And, and the race cars is with the G-force and whatnot, you kind of have to you remind yourself to breathe at times. You know, you can find yourself not breathing. So um, as far as getting ready, that's kind of what I do. I do a little bit of physical activity to keep my heart rate up. Um, I, I don't hit the weights as hard as I probably should. But I do like to make the excuse that if I get any bigger, my arms get bigger, they're going to have to do a lot of work with the seat. And so that's kind of my <laughs> right there. And then Other funny. than that, I do a little bit of projects. I just kind of enjoy uh, time at home. She's got me building uh, all kinds of stuff. I'm working on a table and, uh, you know, making a table out of wood. And it's that not going like great. A, that sounds like a honey-do list to me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Honey-do's. Did, did you say it's not <laughs> going for her? Great. It's going great. <laughs> good it's not great uh, <laughs> okay. that's good <laughs> it's turned into about four days by now so uh, the term, it's fun to me it keeps my mind you know focused on something else and I think the biggest thing for me you know in the racing world and and really in the um you know I guess high adrenaline activities where you know a lot of people talk about getting nervous and whatnot um and I've come to kind of realize that the reason you know, it's not even nervous of anything really happening. It's just anxious, right? Yeah. And, and it's always anxious of the outcome. But I find myself, if I focus on, you know, what I'm doing in that moment, then, you know, it don't, I don't, I don't get anxious about the outcome because I'm, you know, I'm focusing on what I'm doing. So that's kind of, right now I'm just worrying about, you know, day by day, I do my preparation, but uh, try not to think about the outcome of everything. <laughs> Well, good. No, good luck to you uh, in Daytona, though. Definitely. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and and if I see you on ESPN winning the whole thing, I'm 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 really gonna <laughs> brag about this chief chat that we we got to hear first. I'll talk to him. <laughs> Get a little wave to Chief when you win. Yeah. <laughs> shout out. Appreciate yeah. If I can remember, I got a lot of shout outs. I've been I've a lot. If I can remember, uh, give my wife a shout out. That's the number. <laughs> Hey, yeah. Jen- Jennifer, remind him. For yeah. us. <laughs> in Austin, knowing that there will be fewer fans in the stands this year, um, what other, how, how else has the pandemic affected your sport? Um, you know, fortunately, NASCAR has done, uh, done a great job. Um, I think we were one of the first uh, uh, big sports to, to get back back going I think we're out for a month maybe a month and a half at the most and um you know we're big tv driven but of course not having the fans there has been has been uh been a big thing you know for us and the, the, once once we get in the in the race car you know we can't you know we're not focusing on the fans anyway so you know I know football and basketball it's been difficult for them because you know they're so used to the noise everything going on but uh you know I think the biggest thing for us is you know, uh, last year they took away qualifying, uh, which is usually determining our our uh, starting position for the race, and then and then some of the practice, which we we never had a whole lot of practice, but um, so that's kind of kept us uh, from, in a way, taking huge chances with uh, setup on the race car, and, and so uh, it'll be nice. I know I know they're planning on bringing a little bit back. Um, you know, it's not going to be completely the way it was, but. You know, I, I don't mind it. I, I, you know, we do so much preparation at the race shop with these, uh, with these race cars, of course, myself on the simulator. And then, uh, you know, every truck is, uh, you know, by the time it hits the racetrack, um, theoretically, and, you know, the engineers like to, to say the thing's going to be perfect when it hits the racetrack. So, um, you know, we have all kinds of different uh, machines and, and uh, even a chassis dyno. So, uh, you know, the truck should be pretty dang close uh, once it hits the racetrack. So, uh, you know, with that being said, for me, it'd be nice every once in a while to get a little bit of practice and, and see if we can try a couple different things with the truck. But, you know, other than that, 
Um, I think the one that's been probably the one that I want to say hurts, but most noticeable is definitely not being able to have family there, you know. Um, and unfortunately, you know, having my wife there uh, doing PR, I get to have her there, but uh, not having my father. My father, to the point, had only missed, you know, I'd say in my entire uh, racing career, rather it be, you know, a local race, go-kart race, whatnot, um, he'd only, I could probably count on, on my hands how many races he had missed, you know. Um, and, and then last year, there's a lot he, he just couldn't make, you know. Uh, some racetracks, you know, they would be able to be in the in the suites and, and whatnot. Um, but so not having my father and mother or other family come along. And then, of course, the other big thing that that, that was a big, uh, big hole in void is is um, not having, you know, a lot of my friends uh, with Flying Circle, uh, Go Texan. You know, usually we were able to get uh, everybody out to the track and hang out with us. And, and um, you know, I know I know they really enjoy it and. And, um, you know, I know I'm busy, but that's one thing I do enjoy is having, having everybody, like I said, flying circle at the racetrack with us. And, and um, to me, that's kind of taken away. You know, we just show up, do our job and, and head out. And, and um, I really enjoy having people, especially if it's a new experience for them, uh, first time at the track. But, but even, uh, you know, everybody that comes, comes to multiple races a year, that's one thing I miss is having, having everybody at the track hanging out with me. Um, so that's those have been the to me that those those two are the the biggest things that um, you know I miss about um, you know what it used to be like compared to now. But I think we're going in the right direction. So I'm looking forward to I'm, we've kind of worked out some things where we can get them to the racetrack and whatnot. So uh, I look forward to the day we get to see uh, some more flying circle faces and and some of the good Texan guys back at the racetrack. Oh yeah, no definitely definitely and and when you. When you explain, because uh, I'm, I'm kind of envisioning you as a child and you're just in a go-kart and you're just driving. And then you talk about engineers and, and all this techie stuff that goes along with being an actual, like it just, it just, it, was there anything that surprised you as your transition into like professional to be like, man, I, all I want to do is just get in this car and drive. But now I got all this engineering and all this, smart stuff that I probably couldn't figure out uh, that, that I have to kind of take into account when I'm, when I'm driving. Yeah, of course, you know, I, you know, being young and stuff and, and this is probably an area where maybe I could have uh, prepared myself a little better, but I just looked at the driving side. I thought, well, you know, this is what I need to focus on and, you know, I can be the best, but um, you know, once you get to this level, most of the guys, you know, you know, up front um, that are great drivers, you know, just about, I'd say, especially right now, there's 15 drivers out there that, that could go out and win a race, you know. Um, but then you got, you know, the, the race car that, that's got to be up to par, too. So the, uh, you know, it, the margin of, of talent goes from, you know, that, this. Not, I always compare it to, uh, to, you know, the difference between college football and, and, and the NFL. You know, you look at quarterbacks and uh, you can see really great quarterbacks in college football that, you know, can either run the ball or, or uh, kind of come up with plays last minute and, you know, make plays. But NFL is big. You know, you, you need a quarterback that's, that can read the plays, um, that, that can really uh, read the defense, uh, you know, know the plays by heart, know, knows what he needs to do uh, to get five yards instead of, you know, I look at college football as, you know, 15 yards, right? So uh, there's a lot less scoring in the NFL, and it's because you got the best of the best out there. Um, so for in NASCAR and for me, um, it came down to, you know, I, I really had to, um, and I'm still working on it. You know, I'm not, I'm by no means an expert. Uh, and of course we got engineers and stuff, but for me, it's a, it's a big thing to understand, um, you know, what the truck's doing. I can field in the car, but it, it's, it's definitely a big thing where I can point, you know, my crew chief and engineers in the direction, um, you know, rather it be a shock, a spring, um, you know, the rear end, whatever I need arrow wise on the truck, where I need it and, you know, maybe what I'm feeling and, and what can make it better. You know, we're looking for uh, tenths out there, you know, not even a second. A second's too much. If you're second off, yeah. you know, you got a lot of work to do. Um, so there's a lot of mechanical things. And and um, and for my job isn't only driving, but to communicate back, uh, you know, what the truck's doing and, and uh, you know, what I need the truck doing. So. 
that's kind of been trying to understand and it's always changing, right? Just like plays, you know, the plays, you know, you know, everybody's watching the film and coming up with new plays and, you know, how are we going to beat these guys next week? And, and uh, it's kind of the same thing here in the, in the, at the race shop is uh, what can we do with these trucks to make them go faster? And so, you know, I play a big part in, Hey, well, you know, you know, in the, in the seat, this is what I'm feeling. And, and I feel like if we can get, you know, this area of the race car a little bit better, um, you know, we, we might be able to pick up some speed. So um, that's kind of been, you know, like I said, the margin of, of uh, uh, you know, guys that are really good, you know, and what you need, you know, starts to narrow down. So it's, it's like I said, I compare it to NFL football, you know, you got the best of the best guys out there and, and it, it, the, the little things are, are, are going to be what sets you apart. Absolutely. So Austin, as a reminder, our friends at Flying Circle are going to hook up a lucky viewer with a prize package. Can you remind viewers how to enter and what they're going to win? Do you do you know what they're going to win? Because if you don't, I do. I can share. But <laughs> No, I don't know what they're going to win. But I know it's No worries. I can. I am happy to share that. So um, if you're watching, drop your name and your location in the comments. And so... Somebody will win, a very lucky uh, person will win a backpack, patches, tumbler, pen, sticker, um, a hero card, a cap, and a die cast truck. So that's what um, our, if you're watching, if you want to win, drop your name and your location in the comments, and we will um, let you know if you won um, later, later on after the show. Yeah, I'm dropping my name in there right now. I'm, you I'm, can't I'm win. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And what I will say is, you know, I've always been proud to, to be able to, to use flying circle stuff. I mean, be able to use the same gear that the brave men and women of our country use um, is really special to me. And, and of course, I use it all the time. I got I got guns and, and all kinds of stuff and and um, the great products. And, and uh, you know, I, I love getting to use it. And, of course, uh, you know, to be able to use the same products that our, our brave men and women use is pretty special to me. So. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, in the military, we um, we have to be fit to fight, of course. And uh, you kind of talked about your, your physical regimen, how you, you don't want to get too big because you don't want to get everybody make more work for anybody else. Um, but and also mentally. So mental mental uh, resiliency is, is a huge thing in the military and it's a huge thing in life in general. So um, how do you stay fit to compete uh, mentally on, like on race day? Like what's, what, what's going through your mind on the, on the day of the race? Yeah, it's, um, I think it's a little different for everybody. Uh, for me, like I said, I, my biggest thing is in, in, you know, it's taken me a few years to learn. Um, I have my tools here at the shop. So I have my simulator um, and I get it on there and I make hundreds, I spend hours in, on that on the simulator um, and um, you know a lot of people ask me why I do it and, and when I show up to the racetrack you know I just feel prepared so I put as much work as I can in here and then when I show up to the racetrack I feel like it it you know, keeps me be, from being too anxious you know when I hit the racetrack everything's familiar especially now with no practice everything's familiar so I use my tools I make sure I'm prepared and then once I get the racetrack you know uh, to me I, I just don't think about anything I'm, I'm done and when it's go time it's go time and, and I, I feel like you know me just being prepared you know that week um that's one thing you know I do is just make sure I'm prepared and then there's not really much I I worry about um the, the second thing I do a lot is uh and maybe this is another plug maybe I can get Pedialyte to send me some some uh some Pedialyte because that's a big thing man. <laughs> it gets hot in those cars and and, uh, you know, 120, 125, sometimes I've seen 130 degrees and uh, you lose a lot of fluid. And, um, you know, that's a big thing. You got to be, you know, mentally there the whole race and not, we call it falling out of the seat. Um, and so a bunch of Pedialyte. I drink Pedialyte through the week. And then, uh, I mean, it's, I'm, I must spend $100 a week in Pedialyte. <laughs> so, uh, that's and, and, you know, like I said, you know, for me, it's just not overthinking, you know, it's just making sure I'm prepared enough before I get there. And then I, I really have nothing to worry about. So I, I spend my time trying to, I guess, distract myself, just, just kind of, uh, you know, having a good time with, with my team and, and, uh, and my wife and, 
I would say it is what it is. I'm, I'm only going to be as good as I can be here. And as long as I feel prepared, and that's all I can do. And I'm not sure I can compare it to what you guys do. You guys, I have to say, there's, there's three things in life uh, that I think are the most honorable things. Uh, one is, you know, my faith in the Lord or, or anybody's faith in the Lord. Um, I think being a great husband or wife is right up there. I think that's probably one of the biggest calling. And then serving your country, I think, is probably the most, after those two, is the most honorable thing you can do. And I don't think it's always, uh, I don't think every, all the time this, you guys get the credit you guys get. But I just want to say that, you know, me and my family really appreciate your guys' service. And, and uh, of course, NASCAR community, we, we really appreciate uh, the service you guys do and, and, you know, what you guys do for our country. Um, you know, we don't, we don't take it for granted. And, and, um, you know, a lot of people always come to me and, and, you know, say what I do is, is brave and, and, um, it's nowhere near the, the, uh, what you guys do for us. So I, I did want to say that that was one thing I want to say. And, and I want to thank all the brave men and women out there that, that, uh, still fly the flag and, and, um, proud to be an American. So thank Absolutely. you guys. Absolutely. And, and we appreciate your support because, uh, you know, it, nothing feels better than, uh, you know, walking, walking around somewhere out in town in our uniform and people thank us, which, you know, for, for us, we don't feel like we deserve a thank you. Uh, but, but people yeah. go out of their way to, to acknowledge what we do. And, and we really appreciate that. So thank you, you to you and your family as well and NASCAR. Yes. And Austin just wanted to point out that, you know, we have soldiers, airmen, guardians, Marines, sailors, Coast Guard members, and military families. They're tuning in and watching from all over the world. So thank you for those words of inspiration and thanks that you have for our heroes. Sorry, Julie, I interrupted you. <laughs> No, you didn't. You're all good. Um, I want to turn to the live feed, Austin, and um, just kind of let you know that we do have people watching from Thanks all over the world. All you guys out there. And, and, um... We have people watching from all over the world, and people are um, excited to hear from you. Um, somebody wants to win a PS5. We're not giving away a PS5 today, but we are giving away and there will be a nice prize package from, from Flying Circle available. Uh, you have Zachary, um, gonna, I think his last name is Beachler. He is watching from Greenville in uh, South Carolina. He's a big fan. He's commented several times on the thread. So he, um, he wants you to know that he's watching Army family and MWR programming. There are programs they're watching as well. So big thanks to Army MWR for sharing the live feed and for watching along with us. Um, we have somebody, Janice, who says she loves Flying Circle. Danny is watching from Mooresville, Indiana. And we have um, Yasoda. She is watching from Fort Hood, Texas. I think it was uh, Zachary who said he has a piece of your truck or your car on his desk. So he's like a huge fan. He somehow got a piece of one of your vehicles. <laughs> oh, I see that now, Leah. Yeah, a front and rear bumper and a whole side. So wow, <laughs> I got a lot of Austin's truck front and hopefully, rear bumper and a whole side. Hopefully, like hopefully, whole one from my, hopefully that hopefully was one okay one. for him to have. Yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> Are you missing a truck, Austin? Like, <laughs> if so, let's check with Zachary. <laughs> That's one of the things I, I get a lot too. It's, it's funny is, uh, you know, everybody went, hey, you know, I, I actually had somebody come in here one time. Uh, we had run a, a specific paint scheme and, and he came to the shop and he goes, uh, we haven't gone to the racetrack. This thing's beautiful. You know, we're about to, we're racing this week. He goes, hey, um, he had come in three times before this as well. And great, cool, really liked the guys. He's a great fan. And um, he goes, you know, you know, I know I want to see you do really well, but, you know, if things don't go great, you know, and something happens, you think I can get that rear bumper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, you, you'll probably work that out, but I'm not planning on, you know, that happening. I'm hoping there's not a good chance you get it, but – I will put it aside, whatnot, but yeah, we do, we do, you know, we, if, if the trucks got damaged, we gotta, we gotta put new bodies on them and, 
and um, you know we either give them away here or uh, they go up on on auction and and um, I'm not familiar. I, I can't remember the name of the auction, but um, they do give away a lot of stuff and and I think a little bit. I'm looking at Jen because maybe she knows. I think a, a little bit goes to charity. I think a lot we auction off, and and this isn't just me. This is a lot of NASCAR. Um, you know, they auction the pieces off, and and then a portion of that goes to a charity. So, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people. I've been to a few bars where where they they've had a, a hood up there. Of course, you know, I got family. Everybody gets a piece uh, eventually. So. <laughs> got a piece, that's cool, and, and uh, of course, I'd like to see. I think that's the coolest thing ever. Uh, to be able to see what what piece of the truck and see if I can remember, you know, uh, what race that's from. Yes. So send send Austin a pic a picture of, of what you got on your desk right now. He's probably yeah, been looking Zachary. for. Zachary. Yeah, Zachary. He's looking for it. Take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Share it in the chat below. <laughs> he also said that you got his name right, Julie. So. Yes, I did something right today. That's good, good job. Austin, uh, before we wrap up, can you remind us where can we keep up with you online and on social media? How can uh, fans follow your progress? So I got, uh, I'm looking over, make sure I, I get it correct. So I can find <laughs> my Instagram, because they're a little bit different. Instagram's Austin Wayne Self. And then uh, my Twitter, my handle is Austin W Self. And um, you know, that's, that's where I keep up. You can keep up with me, uh, through race season. And, and, um, you know, of course we do flying circle giveaways every once in a while. So if you don't win here today, uh, you gotta, you gotta come follow me on there. And, and, um, you know, a few times a year, we, we give away a little bit of flying circle gear. So, uh, gotta stay up to date. You gotta be involved with me. If you want some of that flying circle gear, unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's no PS fives. And if there was, you wouldn't get it because I need one. <laughs> and, <laughs> so you came to the wrong place for a ps5 my friend they are hard to <laughs> come by right now yeah, they yeah. are everybody wants them everybody wants them so austin man thank you so much for uh spending some time with us today uh man many thanks to our friends at flying circle for making this happen so it, it was awesome uh talking to you uh america's airmen soldiers sailors marines guardians and coast guard members really really appreciate you uh, uh, and, and which, what you're doing to, to, to you know, because there's a lot of people that are entertained by, by and, and watching, watching you race is kind of taking our mind off of whatever problems or whatever issues we've got going on in our life. So we appreciate you for that, definitely. Thank you, guys. I, I appreciate what all you guys do for us and um, to be able to wake up in my bed and be able to, to think about, uh, I want to call it a small thing, but be able to go racing every week and, and take – really in a way take our safety for granted, uh, which we shouldn't. And uh, we really appreciate uh, the brave, bravery uh, of all you guys. And, and um, of course, thank you to Flying Circle for making this happen. I had a great time and, and um, you know, I'm hoping to, to get that Flying Circle up front and, and uh, have some really good racing. And, and I hope everybody enjoys it. And, and um, hopefully everything goes back to normal soon. We can, can bring some of you guys to the racetrack. And of course, you know, uh, see flying circle and everybody at the racetrack again. So thank you guys so much for, for having me on here. Awesome. So we wish you all the best in 2021 and a good luck in your new season. Bye. Thanks Austin. Right. Keep chat out. Keep chat out. <laughs>